Math 1314, review standard normal distribution, Z. Video five, using the Z chart for non-standard distributions. And I'm not really sure why I capitalized the word the Z, V. That's not typically capitalized except as the first word. But regardless, um, we're gonna wrap up this series of review videos by answering the question, what happens if we wanna look up an area or calculate a probability using the Z chart? but the situation is not a standard normal distribution. Uh, keep in mind that standard has a very specific meaning in this context. When you see standard, that specifically means that the mean is equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. But what happens if either of those is not the case? And in general, the mean is rarely ever zero and the standard deviation is rarely ever one. The answer, is we use z-scores instead of the given values. Z-scores by definition uh, are the number of standard deviations from the mean and the standard, the, uh, standard normal distribution table, the z-chart, assumes that you're just counting the number of standard deviations from the mean. So the short answer is we make it standard by converting what, everything we're doing into z-scores. I'll show you what I mean. For example, suppose the distribution of times to complete an exam are normally distributed. No clue what norm makey is. Not sure how that happened. Suppose the distribution of times to complete an exam are normally distributed with a mean of 40 minutes and a standard deviation of 12 minutes. Find the probability a student completes the exam in under an hour. Well, the first trick to doing this is to draw a good picture based on the information that was given. Uh, the good picture I'm referring to is of a bell curve. Now we know it's a bell curve because they say normally distributed, but notice that the mean is not zero. The mean, I think my name disappeared, there we go. The mean is actually 40. And in any normal distribution, the mean is always in the center of the curve. So we would put a 40 there. And we all are also told that the standard deviation is 12. So we'll just write that out there. And we want to know the probability the student completes the exam in under one hour. Well, since we're me measuring everything in minutes, then we want to locate one hour or 60 minutes on this timeline down here. And if we want to know what's the probability they finish it in under an hour, that means that we are interested in all the times that live over here. What's the probability that the time they, they finish the test is somewhere in that shaded area down there? Speaking of area, Recall that we are looking for a probability, but in this context, the probability is the same as the area to the left. Well, in this case, the probability that you're less than something is the same as the area to the left of a given value. The only problem, however, is that this is not a standard normal distribution. We can't call these Z values because the standard deviation is not one, the mean is not zero. At the very best, we can call them X values. So what's our strategy? Our strategy is to turn this into a Z problem, a standard normal distribution problem, by figuring out what Z score would go right here and then we can use the Z table to look up the area to the left of that Z score. So our answer is gonna go something like this. First, we're gonna convert X equals 60, which is the time frame that we're comparing to, to a Z score. And we have the means of doing that. We have a formula that says Z equals X minus mu over sigma. The X, the time that we're interested in is 60 minutes minus the mean, 40. And we're gonna divide that by the standard deviation, which is 12. That gives us 20 over 12. And if we reduce that by four, we get five thirds. So rounded to two decimal places, it's 1.67. The reason I'm rounding it to two decimal places is because our Z chart accommodates Z scores accurate to two decimal places. So that's our first move, convert X equals 60 to a Z score. Our second move is to set up the equivalent uh, probability question. Now, what do I mean by that as I get this formatted? Well, what is it we're being asked to find? In terms of probability, we're trying to find the probability 
that the time it takes the, to complete the exam, which is X, is under or less than 60. But the nice thing about the z-score is that the answer to this question is going to be the same thing as the answer to the probability that z is less than the equivalent z-score that we just calculated. So we're converting it to a problem that can be answered using our z-chart. Remember, in the z-chart, areas under the curve correspond to probabilities of z being certain values. And now that we've converted from a... Um, now that we've converted it from a non-standard question to a standard question by converting to Z, now we can use the Z chart. And as noted in the last video, all we have to do here is actually go to the Z chart and look up 1.67 since the Z chart tells us the area to the left of a Z score. Let's go check out that Z chart. And we're looking for Z equals 1.67. Here's the 1.6 row and the seven column is this one. Oops, didn't mean to highlight all that. So we go down to this column and look at the 1.6 row and I believe the intersection is right here. Looks like the area to the left of Z equals 1.67 is 0 0.9525. That area is zero. 0.9525. You don't have to write area equals, but it is. If we wanted to answer the question in the context of a percent, we could say the probability a student completes the exam in under an hour is 95.25%. but it's a pretty standard way to take a non-standard distribution problem whose mean isn't zero and or standard deviation isn't one and convert it to a standard distribution problem using the conversion formula that I'm about to highlight, Z equals X minus mu over sigma to convert the desired probability question into one that our Z chart can handle so that we can look up the answer. Let's take a look at one more. At a bottling plant, each bottle of water is supposed to be filled with 20 ounces of water. The mean amount of water in these bottles is actually 19.8 ounces with a standard deviation of 0 0.25 ounces. Find the probability a randomly selected bottle of water from the plant will contain at least 20 ounces. Why at least 20? Because as the consumer, if you buy a bottle of water, this one's not 20 ounces, if you buy a bottle of water and it says it contains 20 ounces and it contains 20 ounces or more, you're good. You're not going to be upset that you were supposed to sell me 20 ounces of water. And you sold me 21 ounces. What's the idea of giving me more than I paid for? Nobody would complain about that. But if it were less than 20 ounces, then you might go, wait a minute, I paid for 20 ounces, but you didn't sell me 20 ounces. All right, let's sketch the bell curve. It's always a good idea on, on any problem involving a distribution to sketch the picture. And as we go through this course, I will remind you when and how to sketch all these pictures. All right, what number goes in the middle? Hint, it's not 20. The mean is actually 19.8 in this scenario. So that's what goes in the middle. And our standard deviation is 0 0.25. The question we're trying to answer is what's the probability that a randomly selected bottle's contents is at least 20? meaning that it's greater than or equal to 20. If you just put greater than, it would be okay, but at least means greater than or equal to. For example, you can drink legally if you are at least 21. So you can be greater than 21 or actually equal to 21. All right, so the probability that X is greater than or equal to 20 isn't something that we can directly look up in our Z chart because our Z chart is for a standard normal distribution and standard means mean is zero and standard deviation is one, which neither of which we have. However, we can turn this into a Z problem. Oh, my apologies, I'm not drawing over here. There's the 20. We want to know the probability that the contents of the bottle are 20 ounces or more. So we would shade to the right because to the right of 20 is where all the numbers greater than 20 exist. 
So we want to know that area. And it is a right area, so we'll have to make accommodations in the Z chart. All right, zero in the middle. We need to figure out what the Z equals. And we can do that pretty quickly by just using our conversion formula. Z equals X minus mu over sigma. X is 19 point, no, X is 20. 19.8 is here. And the sigma was 0 0.25. One second, folks. I just want to check out something real quick. Okay. I thought we had a negative z-score on one of these, but we don't. That's okay. All right. So what is 20 minus 19.8? And then all that divided by 0.25. Actually, I can do this without a calculator. The top is 0.2 or 0.20. So it's 20 over 25, which reduces to four-fifths. This should be exactly 0 0.8. But not to be too arrogant, I'll go ahead and just double check it because I've made worse mistakes than that. Yep, 0 0.8. Now, that means that the equivalent problem that we're trying to answer is the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 0 0.8. But remember, and we'll kind of put this somewhere in a, in a, hold on folks, I know what I'm trying to say. We'll highlight this so it kind of separates itself from the problem that we're currently doing. We need to know this probability question, but be careful. This is a right area. It's an area that's shaded to the right. So our answer is going to be one minus the left area. The left area is what we look up. We need to look up 0 0.8 in the Z chart, but remember that the Z chart has two decimal digit places and this one only has one. So for a, problem, a number like 0 0.8, you want to think about it as 0 0.80. Let's go to the Z chart. 0 0.80 would be right here. 0 0.80. 0 0.7881. 0 0.7881. 0.7881. Now, if you stopped and said that was your answer, it's inconsistent with your picture. Your picture has less than half of the curve shaded, and your answer is more than 50%. If we subtract these, we'll get 0 0.2119. As a percent, that's 21.19%. There's our answer. Under these parameters of the mean amount of water in the bottle being 19.0 ounces with a standard deviation of 0 0.25, there's only a 21.19% chance that that bottle of water contains at least how much it claims to contain. It's situations like these where the uh, quality control person of the plant would say, we need to shut things down and recalibrate because we're, uh, we're not doing what we said we're going to do. All right, that wraps up the review videos for the Z distribution on uh, Monday of class, and hopefully you'll watch these before class Monday. We're also going to look at the T distribution. It flows almost exactly like the Z distribution. There's just a couple of different things about the, Z, the T chart as, a compo as opposed to the Z chart. Um, but if you understand the concept of left area equals probability or less than, Right area is probability that you're greater than, and middle area is probability that you're in between, then it's going to be a really easy transition to make.